Welcome to episode 393 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I'm Ryan Walton, and as always, I'm joined by Dan Reamer. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. We've been up, we've been chatting. A little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Popping off this morning. We've been conversing. Producer Gerald behind the glass. What's up? Behind the, the plexi, we couldn't afford real glass, we got him behind plexi. Yeah, shit ain't bulletproof, so it'd be nice. It's it's not bulletproof, but when you take in his cat-like agility, mm. along with the... the you know the plexi slowing it down. I don't think no. I don't. I don't think that's how that works. I think he has to rely strictly on his cat like agility. <laughs> you don't think the plexi no. has any? Okay. No. I don't know. I'm not no. a I'm not a firearms expert. I'm not either, but I'm pretty sure that plexi is not uh, gonna slow any any um, munitions down at any uh, to any reasonable descent. I'm not a ballistics expert. I don't know. I don't know. I just I just do this show and then have a normal ass job. Yeah. That doesn't doesn't involve ballistics or firearms. Mm-hmm. Nope. Um, I do have some plexi in the garage though. Mm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we need to get some of that bulletproof stuff so you can protect producer Gerald. Some of the bulletproof stuff is plexi, right? Or Lexan. Mm, it's yeah. Plexi is not bulletproof. What if it's thick enough? Anything's bulletproof. Um. Yeah, but then it becomes like a plexi cube. It's no longer plexiglass. of glass. It's like that thing at the mall that you get in that does the hurricane winds. Yes. We yeah. got him in one of those. Yeah. No, bullets are going through that. I'm I'm afraid. To yeah, yeah, that me. one, but like we just thicked it up. Oh, like if you just filled the whole thing with plexi? Not the whole thing, but you know, three inches all the way around. Uh, no, I don't. If you're putting a person in the middle of it, I don't think it's enough. There you go. Bullet resistance polycarbonate sheets. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of numbers. I don't do numbers, dude. Three quarters. They're calling three quarters. They're good. Um, oh, it's very expensive. It's okay. I I want to I want to clear something up here though. I want you to note that all of these say bullet resistant. Yeah, that's proof. It's fine. That's that's different. Fireproof and fire resistant are two different things. Just like bulletproof and bullet resistant. Right. Like yes, it will slow down the velocity. That shit's still going in you. And is it worse if a bullet goes in you slowly? Uh. It depends where it hits you, I think, because if it's just going to go clean in, clean out flesh wound, you want that velocity. But if it's going to like hit you somewhere it matters, you don't want to ricochet. Well, I'll tell you what, if that's a, if, if if you want it to zip through, you do not want any resistant fucking glass. That that acrylic is bulletproof. You want the thinnest shit you can get so it, that you get the full, you know, through and through action going on. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get shot. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll start there, too. But since you've already brought up the hypothetical, we have to follow yeah. it. You see that? Scroll back up a little bit. You see how it's it's ruined after it gets shot. Oh yeah, and it's a yeah, it's a giant. See, it's a brick. <laughs> I don't know how big that guy's hands are. You can't. That's a plexa. You can't judge that. It's a plexa brick. He could have had little tiny baby hands. He could have. That's still a fucking brick. Um, I don't know. I don't think anything will ever happen here where Gerald needs to be behind bullet, bulletproof glass. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I've met us. For yeah, most, I think we're fine. For the most part, we're pretty good, but uh, I think we're every now and then. Gerald's work's got a bulletproof SUV. My work not have one. We've got SUVs though. As yeah, far my, as I know, they'll just take a bullet right through them. My work doesn't even have delivery trucks where the brakes work right on them. So yeah, we have Ford Escapes. I don't think they're bulletproof. Mm, they're not bulletproof. I can I <laughs> promise you, they're not bulletproof. <laughs> Man, that Ford Bronco, you seen that thing? I'm into it. Uh huh. It looks good. But they're coming out with a new uh, GMC version of it too. Are they? Uh, I think the GM. I like the GMC better. Oh man, I love. I'm in love with that Bronco. I haven't seen that GMC, but I'm in love with that Ford. Let's click on that blue one. I can't remember what. You get about calling half hard it. looking at that thing. I can't remember what they're calling the GMC, but it's like the old. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It looks fake, kind of. There's a problem. I got to see one up close and personal because right now it's you just touch it's kind one. of Put your hands on it. I almost, almost pre-ordered one. I'm into pre-ordering these cars that I don't actually have to buy. I'm, I've gotten into that. Oh, yeah. You built one for yourself? Yeah. So what all these companies are, they're all stealing from Tesla now mm-hmm. in that you pay to have the ability to buy one, but you can just get that money back if you don't do it. You're just basically loaning them money. So for uh, $100, you could you could buy the Broncos when they're available. If you change your mind, they'll give you a hundred bucks back, but you're floating forward that hundo. Gotcha. Same thing for the, the cyber truck that I pre-ordered. Like I put a hundred dollars down on that. The Tesla's just use that money for rockets or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
There's the GMC. Is that it? Uh, no, that was not it. I don't that's like that. That ugly. looks like a, a douche mobile. Douche canoe. It wasn't that. Do people canoe Star Lake? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your boat's too big for Star Lake. Uh, mm, yeah, too many shallow areas, yeah. I just realized that all the Star Lake talk was before we started recording. Yeah, well, I was wondering what you were doing. Super out of context. Um, yeah. Because I started to think if you could if you could canoe it, because I said douche canoe, and see, that's how my brain works. Right, so now, hey. Because you said it was smaller. I'm like, I wonder if you could canoe that. Yeah, yeah. You could, yes. There it is, but it's like... It's wrapped. Yeah, that's... That looks like that one. Yeah, I don't think it was it. That wasn't it. There was something else. That Bronco that looks up. good. The Bronco does look good. I like the old, old Broncos better, though, still. The old Broncos are super gangster. I love them. Mm-hmm. Just like the old... I also like the old Chevrolet C10s. Mm-hmm. You get a you know a six-inch lift on them or a four-inch lift on them, and they look pretty. Those things are so hot, though, right now. Oh, they're super expensive. I know. Yeah, they're so expensive. I know. It it was like everybody was just using them for shop trucks, but now they're like, they're hot. Yeah, they're super, yeah, they're like, because I, I looked at one, it was like 12 grand. I was like, well. Yeah. Yeah, you're like, well, never mind. Yeah. It was a cool. I uh, don't remember the Yeah, that's truck. that's not the style I'm looking at. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the style um, over here. Uh, let's see, where is it? I like I like that dra- over here. Yeah, this is helping, huh? Uh, yeah. Second row, all the way to the left, is the style I like. Mm. Uh, but then what you do in order to really make it look cool is you put a four to six inch lift on it and get some big tires on it, and then they look good. What if you only lift the front, so you squat that back down? No, no, <laughs> no. That's popular where I grew up. I know. They put that slant on there. I know. There should be right there, that black one. Top row, fifth one to the right. That blue looks good, though. That blue, the blue and does look good. Right there. That's the dream machine right there. Four miles to the gallon. I'm okay with that. Not not, not a gallon more. I had a, I had a, a guy I used to work with way back when. Um, actually had one. It wasn't lifted that much. Uh, I probably had, had a smaller out. lift on it, but it was it was a cool fucking truck. I like the blue and white. The blue and white is nostalgic for me. The blue and white does look good. I like the Bronco in blue and white too. I think that's why I like that one that he clicked on so much. Yeah, I like it's a it's a throwback. If this is your first time here, welcome. We get together each and every week. We talk about video games. We talk about C tens, and we talk about vacations, houses, and refer back to it when you don't have any context. That's <laughs> um, you're welcome. What is this? Oh, that's the Bronco again. That's fake Bronco. That's a fake Bronco. It's a Bronco. It's not real. That's real. That's a Bronco. No, it's, not. <laughs> it's a, it's a Ford Bronco. <laughs> yeah, it's the Bronco. <laughs> if you just go to Ford's website, you can see the different. They have, they're like Jeep now. They have like 27 different build configurations of it. Oh yeah, that's and... the market they're going after. Uh huh. You get like the. Um, the performance mm-hmm. model, the off-road model, the yeah. you know, the pavement princess model. Well, actually, I think uh, Chevy's doing the same thing with the Trailblazer. Oh yeah, that they just because well, Chevy just, does it with their trucks too. There's like every like Silverado's got yeah. There's tons of models too, the but Midnight I'm, and the sh- Platinum and well, Chevy's going going there big go. with the uh, um with the Trailblazer. I mean, there's like an RS version. It's crazy. So scroll all the way over to the uh, first edition. That thing is sixty thousand dollars. Wow. For that first edition. Hmm. They're cool though. Those are the first ones off the line, I'm guessing. Yeah, and they have like perks from every single model. They have like everything. Ah. Uh, See all the different ones they have. I mean, you can tell they're going after Jeep. They even have the little badge icons for all the different ones. Um. They're yeah. they're expensive though. They're all available in two door and four door. I'll tell you what sucks is everything in that thing is going to change in two years. So, because that's the beauty of Ford, they're constantly making adjustments and changes. I had to get that base model. Look at it with the doors off though. It looks it looks good. 
You like it? See, I don't like it with the doors off. Yeah, when I'm out there off roading, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you're definitely an off road kind of guy. Yeah, when I'm out there off roading under I've the known stars you long like that to guy. Know that. When I'm in the sand dunes in Tennessee, yeah. and I'm yeah. Yeah, this motherfucker likes the outside so much. He's got a robot lawnmower, and he's talking about off roading. Jesus. Yeah, that's Christ. how much I love the outsides. I don't want to take away by having me mow. <laughs> uh-huh. I want to be out there uh-huh. in it. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't just. I, I don't just like walk. I like seize the outside. I like go all out. If you want to support us, head over to patreon.com forward slash game stitch if you have any extra money. If you don't, tell your friends, family, and four Bronco drivers about us. Because that's absolutely free, you cheap ass bastards. That's right. Right up front here, I do want to give a shout out to a friend of the show. Uh, 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 no, I can't think of their. I just lost their names. It's fine. Uh, Not really a friend of the show. No, no, you. yes, they are. The Wade family. Um, okay. We just want to give a. Put them in their thoughts. Uh, their child is going through some things, and we just want to let you guys know that we're thinking of you. We're we're with you. If you need anything, let us know. And uh, it's good to hear that he came home. So, absolutely, you've got our our contact info. So, yes, reach out to us if you need anything. If we can help, so anyway. let us know if you need anything. But we are thinking of you. We hope all all of you are thinking of him too. All you other fellow listeners, friends of the show friends of the show you think it's you think that broncos photoshopped yeah, in that I, location I, um look at them stupid tires they got them city tires on there look how that guy's driving it man he's straight up straight up and down yeah that see that guy there might be doing it he looks like his arms are kind of buckled a little bit yeah he's but he's a, a little he's a little straight up and down for spinning tires in the de- in the desert too and i don't this, know i can't i like that it, that it go, it's got goat mode. Go over any yeah. terrain mode. Go, yeah, I know. Okay. I, I, I don't know, know if you saw that or not. I know what goat stands for. I read it. Stupid. <laughs> Let's jump into the news because there is a shit ton. Yeah, there's a lot this week. Uh, partially because of the time and, and place that we record, we missed the Xbox event on last week. So this is probably going to seem like old news, but we haven't chatted about it yet. Um, and we gave um, PlayStation some time. Uh, so it's only fair that we give Microsoft some time and also because we decide what we do here. Uh, but Which Microsoft cool. made a couple announcements before the big reveal of, of the first party lineup and some stuff they have going on. So first couple things. So they're going to discontinue the One X and the Xbox One S all digital edition. Mm-hmm. They're not going to make those anymore. Now this has the internet going a little wild because they can't understand why they would quit making the One X, which is their most powerful model, and continue to make the One X, the One S. Uh, so the internet's a blaze over that. I think you will learn soon that it has to do with pricing. Yeah, I think for what it costs to make and and sell the One X, the price would probably be getting close to the, what they're going to charge for. Uh, the, the Series, Series X. X. I also think the naming convention is a major issue. Yes. I think selling the One X and the Series X at the same time is an issue. And it's super confusing for people tr- that don't understand that are trying to buy for somebody. It is the same reason they are discontinuing the all-digital edition because Lockhart is the same thing. Yep. It is a Series X, but all-digital. So um, I-, I think this has a lot to do with naming convention and pricing. Uh, if they didn't name shit stupid, they could have kept selling those, I think. But that's not the world we live in. It's not. And I, th- I think they're looking to... I think it's very obvious they're looking to make some money transfers. Um, and we'll get into it a little later. But I think what you're going to find... I think one of the reasons... Because you know me, I'm the cynical negative guy here, right? No. Right? Right? I think so, judging by what we're going to talk about here in just a minute, uh, I think part of the problem is that if you've got the One X and the Series X together, I don't know that they're going to look or run that differently from each other. So we got to get rid of one of them. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, These two companies could not be taking more different approaches to this. No, they couldn't. And it's. I think it's. it's very interesting to me. Um, and I hesitate to, I kind of hesitate to say this, but I think the console war in the traditional sense is over. 
Oh yeah, and uh, I think, I think it and I think everybody been. won. Um, I, I think they're all doing their, they're all yes. doing their own thing, going their own way. I don't feel like any of them are in direct competition with each other anymore. I agree with that, but I think they all have, have they're all winning at something. I don't think they're all winning the same. Um, no, I you know, agree. You know, Nintendo and PlayStation are winning on a different level that Microsoft is not. Right. But Microsoft, when you look at those companies, also has the rest of Microsoft where Nintendo and Sony do not. And I think it's doing, yeah, and I think it's, I would, and I would almost disagree with you in a certain sense, because you're right. I think PlayStation and Nintendo are winning at what they're trying to, at they're doing uh, on their singular focus. I would put Microsoft up there as winning once you take into all the small into account all the small wins that they're doing with everything that they're involved in. Well, I, I think they're trying to turn Xbox into what feels like Microsoft, right? So it's Right. Everybody has it, they pay for it all the time, they're used to using it. They're trying to turn it into that. Mm-hmm. Um and and I think that that's a slow process because you have to retrain the consumer. Um, and, and I, and I think a lot of the hard work's already done, right? but it's been a slow grind. They don't sell nearly as much as, as PlayStation and, uh, Nintendo. Even if you look at the subscriptions, they're still not touching them as far as dollars goes, as, as right. far as what we know, they don't report much anymore. Uh, but you know, I think most people assume that the PlayStation, you know, doubled the Xbox, you know, one X and mm-hmm. S and all those, the PS4 pretty well doubled them in sales. So, you know, yeah. I don't know. I think the console war was, was done last time, you know, Microsoft tried to do something different then they pivoted, but it was never, it never felt like those two were competing. Anyone well, who's ever held it, a switch knows that Nintendo's not competing. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo, I don't think Nintendo's tried to compete since the GameCube really. I don't know if Nintendo ever even has any idea what anyone else is doing. I don't know if yeah, they even looked at a PS4 or If they or even Xbox. care or any of that. It doesn't uh, matter. Right. It doesn't matter to them because they're they're on their own train. Um, at one point, I think PlayStation and Microsoft, the Xbox brand in particular, were trying to be in direct competition with each other. Uh, I think Xbox had the right idea in trying to make the Switch last generation. I think the fact that they pulled out of that, like you just talked about, um, and did that turnaround and went back to trying to directly compete, screwed them. I think they've learned from that mistake, and now they're trying to build on what their original vision was for last generation. Um, so, if you if you rank those three companies on on video game brand power, though, you would go Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox. Yeah, I mean Nintendo just out of their IPs alone. Yeah, you can't. I know people sometimes like to shit on Nintendo, but you, you as a as an informed gamer or or video game connoisseur or whatever you like to be called, you you understand kind of what Nintendo is and its place. But what you what you sometimes fail to forget, not you, but the listener, mm-hmm. is that everyone knows yeah. what Nintendo is. Everyone. Right. I mean, I mean, when you think of when you think of the PlayStation Four, you think of the logo, the sound, the you know, but but they don't have a. They've tried, but they don't have a specific mascot. I mean, they have, mm. you know, PlayStation only, you know, Nate Drake, that kind of thing. People that we, you know, um, think of when we think of PlayStation. But when you think of Nintendo, it's Mario, it's Zelda, it's Sam- it's Samus. I mean, you you know, there, boom. If That's... I went to the to the grocery store and I ask, I, I showed a picture of a hundred a hundred people a picture of Mario. Ninety eight of them would know who it is. Oh, any yeah. age. Yeah. If Do I did the same thing for Nate Drake, twenty people might know. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I, I know people is... argue that PlayStation's ahead of, of Nintendo and everything, and maybe in your hearts, and maybe even on on paper, but not in brand recognition. There's nothing more powerful than Nintendo in video games. Right. I mean, when's the last time you saw a uh... You know, uncharted branded breath mints. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, when's the last time you saw somebody wearing an uncharted T-shirt? I mean, have we have we heard about an uncharted uh, Lego set coming? Nope. Man, that NES set <laughs> looks so good. And a Mario set. It looks so good. No PS One though. No P. No Lego PS One, huh? No. Nope. Yeah. People lining up to get the NES Mini. 
giving away the PlayStation Mini. Yep, <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Nintendo it will always. They almost can't. They screw up about every other generation, but they almost can't ever fail. fail. Right. No, I agree with that. Yeah. So this show's all about Nintendo. I'm just kidding. Uh, so they announced they're killing off though. This is a weird. That's uh. We got to a weird place talking about Xbox. Yeah, we did. They, they're killing off the the one S all digital edition, formerly referred to as Xbox Sad. Um, and they are doing away with the one X. They are still in the wild. They are not producing anymore. So if you want one, go get one. They also made an announcement that Phil Spencer, this, these two stories not on here. I'm going rogue already. Phil That's Spencer fine. also said no plans to bring, to currently bring uh, Game Pass to any other consoles. Mm-hmm. As it stands right now, it's going to stay on PC and the Xbox platform. Um, and then they also made some announcements uh, around xCloud, which for me couldn't, not for me, I think for, probably couldn't be worse for anyone than Google. No, uh, yeah. Because they announced that xCloud is going to be a part of Games Pass ult- Game Pass Ultimate, uh, which includes um, live... 15 bucks a month? Yeah, it's, it's live. Uh, it's Game Pass for Windows. It's Game Pass for Xbox. And now it will include um, xCloud, which they've said won't be called xCloud. They're going to... Ch- call it Game Pass Stream or or Xbox Stream or something like that. They haven't released a name, but he said it'll it'll be something traditional. It won't oh. be called XCloud. That's a project name. Right. Um so it's going to be a part of that service for $15 a month. Now, how quickly they they have stopped selling one year of Xbox Live. You can't buy those anymore. How quickly until they kill off Xbox Live? And you can oh, only get Game Pass. It's probably no more than six months after launch. Yeah, I think so. So I know for everybody right now that's like pulling their hair out, like live isn't going away. It's going to be integrated into the live, Game Pass. Yeah, the, the notion you can have live without Game Pass is going to go away, and as it should. Uh, you should only be able to get Game Pass Ultimate. That should all. That should be the only thing that exists. They can drop the name and just call it Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will just come with the Xbox version, the PC version, your streaming, your gold benefits. It'll just be everything. It's, it'll yep. just be uh, that one service. is fifteen dollars a month, and that just is what it is. They get away from the year at a time, turn into Netflix, where it just comes out auto draft all the time, and you don't even think about it ever again. Yep, and it covers everything. It covers everything yep. you need to do on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, Google needs to come up with some serious answers to this. Yeah, so the, yeah, that's why I started saying that is because the Stadia <laughs> on the flip side is ten dollars a month, and for that you get basically live. You get the ability to play online, and you get two free games a month. And mm-hmm. and, and I say two free games, but they always give more than two. They do, uh, but you don't get that instant game catalog. So on Game Pass, if I have a hundred games that I can stream to any device that that has Game Pass on there. Along with also getting every first party title, all the games that we're about to talk about, mm-hmm. we're about to talk about a slew of games. Every one of them will be on Game Pass. You know, just just with all of that, it, the value proposition for Stadia is, is going immensely. to get tough. Yeah, it's going to get tough for them. Um, and I, we've been both been very pro Stadia. Mm-hmm. Like we've been very Stadia forward, um, but times are going to get tough if they don't figure something out. Yeah, and I don't. The, the problem is at this point, I don't know what Google can do. I mean, Xbox automatic already comes into this with an extensive library they can draw from. So Google so literally what, has to buy that library. Now, what if? What is a strong what if? What if Stadia could partner with PlayStation or Nintendo? Google's not going to do that, man. Would it take something like that to... And Nintendo's wanna, not going to do that. I don't want to say save it, because I don't think Stadia's dead. But let's say Stadia decided to do the same thing. They don't have the library. They can't give you 100 games. Well, the problem is, is none of the other consoles are going to do that. 
they're not going to partner with Stadia to give away their games so on anything but they're that... working. I mean, that's part of the that's part of Nintendo and PlayStation's business plan is you can only get it here. I mean, it's literally would, integrated would into it. PlayStation Now will continue to be Sony's version of yeah, I do of their Game Pass situation, and Nintendo uh, likes you to buy everything every generation. Big fan of that. Yeah, you know, I don't, I don't know. And again, I don't want to use the word save because I don't think Stadia is dead or dying. I mean, they just spent, they just setting up studios. They brought people over from everywhere. What I think happens is I think the minute that the Xbox Series X comes out and all this, and the X Cloud, whatever it's called, whatever they end up calling it when it comes out, I think that automatically relegates Google Stadia into a niche column. And I don't think, I really don't think there's a way out of that. I'd like to see some numbers on Stadia. I'm really interested to see if anyone uses it. Yeah, I, I mean, don't think they've released anything. I don't. I am. I'm, I'm pretty sure they haven't. Um, but I think they ought. I, yeah, I think what you could, they're going to automatically go down as an as a niche system as for Google heads for la- for lack of a better term. Now, um, I want to be. I want to be clear that. I still love the way Stadia works. I love that I can grab my computer, I can flip it open, I can pull up Chrome and be playing Stadia in, in three minutes. But? But I don't do that. Yeah, that's that's what I was, that was why I, so, that's what I was pushing for. I love awesome that I can. As awesome as it works, it doesn't draw you in. Um, I love that I can, but I don't. I also think they maybe were a little boastful about what that thing could do at launch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't think even now, I don't think it does those things. I don't think that people with 20 meg speeds like they promised can play in, you know, 4K. I don't think that's happening. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I look, I'm, a, I'm still a fan of what Stadia is doing. I love that Google's in this space. The more people in this space, the better everyone has to get. So you're right. One of the biggest things Google can do is make it work on. Everything that has Google on it, Google Games on it, or whatever. Uh, so I, I still can't just use my TV that has Chromecast right on it. No, I still can't there it. though. You have you have your your PC stuff. You have so anything with a Chrome browser. You have um, obviously the the Chromecast Ultra, uh, Android phones. I know Pixels were the only thing working, but I noticed. When I go to, I'm on iOS, and when I go to the Stadia app now, I have a controller button, and when I click, it tells me to sync my controller. So I think I can now play on iOS as well. I just need um, it to work on my TV. I, I need to be. Yeah. On, I need to only buy the controller. They're making moves, though, that are interesting. If they can get to a point where we talked about before where there's no entry, right? So your TV has Chromecast already there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could grab your Dual Shock and you could just be playing games on Stadia. That's interesting. That's different than what they're doing right now. Yes, that's what because I because it doesn't work everywhere. But when it works everywhere, you don't even have to buy anything. It becomes more interesting. That's how it becomes interesting to me. That's and maybe that's, that's why I've been holding yeah. off. I think I've said that since the beginning. I need it to work on my TV. I need to just. I'm not buying a Chromecast and plugging it into my TV that has Chromecast on it. Right. I get that. Uh, So let's jump into all these announcements that came part of the Xbox Series X showcase event. Hmm. Uh, And there's a lot. There is a lot. Halo Infinite, they showed some first gameplay during the showcase. It was narrated by Cortana, or possibly Doctor... I don't know, I'm not actually going to put that in there, because I don't know. I don't know what's a spoiler and what's a not, because I don't play Halo. Uh, Anyways, it looked Uh, like Halo to me. Neither of them are spoilers. Okay. Doctor Halsey. It was either Cortana or, or Dr. Halsey. Uh, it uh, it looked like Halo to me. Microsoft has said that this will be the platform that Halo will build on for the next 10 years. I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, but it looked real Halo to me. It looked good, I guess. I don't play Halo. It looked fine. I will tell you, I, there were some themes in this that, I, that maybe were a little off-putting to me. A lot of first-person action in this. Oh, yeah, showcase. yeah, yeah. But that's what Sony, that, or that's what Microsoft's known for man it's what they do yeah the exception to gears um i i touched on this a little bit earlier and now i can finally get into it um we're going to talk about a lot of games here ryan you talked earlier about how they're doing away with the digital only and the basically this the the one x line 
Correct. Um, which is currently their highest, perf- uh, as far as performance goes, um, and that it's that that's the top of the line for Microsoft. So for anybody super confused, you'll still be able to buy the One S. Yes. And you'll still be able to buy these while they're while they're out there. They're not making any more. They will continue to make the One S. So they're not stopping making the current generation. Yes. Just in case I confuse anybody. But uh, none of these, nothing that we're going to talk about here looked outrageously amazing to me. For all the power that Xbox Series X is supposed to bring, none of these blew my face off. And it wasn't just about, you know, what the games were or what the gameplay was or it's a property I don't care about. Uh, I've said it before that I don't think we're going to see a huge technical jump this time, uh, this generation. But this was even more limited than I had thought it was going to be. And I'm wondering, like I said, I'm, I think part of the reason they're doing away with the, with the X series, with X, God damn it, fucking Microsoft. Yeah, it's not good. Uh, it's not good at all. Part of the reason they're doing away with the one X is because it's performance issues and the way that, Games Pass and X Cloud is going to work would really bring the performance of those of the One X and the Series X way too close to each other to be worth making both of them. Yeah, it could be. Um, and of course, as you already spoke on the whole Series X, One X, X Series bullshit that I just probably lost everybody on because they can't follow either. It's interesting. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that anything on the PlayStation Five stage blew me away either. And there's a lot of talk around because they have said that the first couple of years there will be no ex- exclusives on the Series X. Everything will run on the One S, which I'm just going to say from now on, previous generation. Um, so people are like, then you're going to have to dumb down the games. And Phil Spencer keeps saying no. And you play on a high end PC. You're not dumbing down everything else. It's just that looks even better. And so what he keeps saying is the Series X will look even better, but we're not dumbing down the other version. I don't know how that works. I'm not a. I'm not in the industry. I think what he's saying is the same thing. He's just saying it in a better way. Um, but I firmly believe that what I saw was the dumbed down version of. Could be. But let me rephrase that. I think that's they showed me the version I wanted to see. Which is what does it look like at its worst? That's what I'm. Is that it, or is that like here's what we have to show you because it looks great, and oh my god, it doesn't. I don't know. Uh, Let's keep this train rolling. Fable is finally back, as rumors suggested. It's being developed by Playground Games of Forza Horizon fame. The game was premiered with a small fairy who looked like Tinkerbell, who was fluttering around in a beautiful world until she was eaten by a toad. So it does look like the dark humor is returning. Mm -hmm. You know, I like the idea of a new Fable. I'm sure Microsoft will go ahead and make that first person, so I can't enjoy it. Um, uh, they may that, be, they may not. Fable never has been first person. I, I know. I'm just being an asshole because uh, there's oh yeah. right. So I do have a. I'm all about stretching your wings. No Tinkerbell joke. No fairy yeah. joke. No, intended. it was a fairy joke, but I hear you. Yeah, I, I you know, n- not intended, but dusted that joke right in there. Yeah, I, I did. But I'm a little nervous about a, you know, a, people who make racing games <laughs> making a fable. No, nah, it'd be um, fun. <laughs> I'm, It'll be fine. It concerns me a little bit. I'm all about, like I said, I'm all about broadening new horizons. God damn it! I did it again. Yeah, they'll be fine. But uh, it's uh, Gerald says they did it because the for the graphics because they have the their, engine that could be skill sets. Um, they'll be fine. Uh, Cinema's Saga Hellblade Two uh, will be set in Iceland and is built using Unreal Engine Five. Gameplay was not shown. Um, but they are chronicling the uh, development on Ninja Theory's YouTube channel. Avowed, which is Obsidian's next large-scale <coughs> role-playing game, was shown during the event. It's a dark game that features skeleton enemies and a first-person perspective. Oh, yay. So, they made it for you, Ryan? I know. Uh, it's got some magical abilities. No release date was given, but it's promised to be an expansive RPG being built from the ground up to take advantage of the Xbox Series X. So that looked fine. It looked very magical. Mm-hmm. It did. Forza, Forza Motorsports 
Forza Motorsport. Uh, Turn 10 is an early development on the next Forza Motorsport title, which premiered with an in-engine trailer. As expected, it looks like uh, Forza, which always looks really good. Mm-hmm. Undead Labs premiered State of the K3. If you know what State of the K is, it's the next. <laughs> you could just stop right there at the <laughs> zombie survival series. You could just stopped after the first line. Looks to be just as dark. Yeah, they're making State of the K3 next. Yeah. Uh, Crossfire X is co-developed by Remedy Entertainment. Uh, Crossfire X campaign premiered during the showcase. It was co-developed with Remedy. It, I don't know who was co-developed. Who else it was co-developed? It doesn't with. say who the who they what a bizarre way to write this. Anyways, yeah. uh, it does have some psychological and character-driven elements as the studio's previous games did, but it also has an intense first-person shooting multiplayer. Looks like it was Smilegate Studios is maybe who they co-developed it with. It was free free to play multiplayer. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, first person perspective again. So, yay, well, you yay. love that, Ryan. Rock hard that, about that. Oh yeah. Um, a console launch exclusive for the Xbox is Warhammer Forty Thousand Dark Tide. I think we just call that Forty K. Uh, I think you offended. Is that what I I said? Forty thousand. I don't think they say it out like that. Well, I don't play it, so I can say it. The anyway kids, I, want. I think the kids just say forty k. I don't know, maybe that's okay. different. Warhammer forty k, Darktide. <laughs> uh, it was shown, like I said, it's going to be at a console exclusive at launch. Seems to have high production values. And it, a recon squad has been sent into a hive in order to squash some sort of unrest. But they quickly find the situation is worse than anticipated, and it'll be out in. I don't know how they say it's a launch exclusive and it's coming out in 2021. Um, I don't know. That write-up sucks, and I can't wait to not play that game. That's uh, a generic-ass well, write-up. It is. First person. Uh, but Great. supposedly it's going to get back into the the heart of what fans of Warhammer 4K Great. enjoy. So, Fantasy Star Online 2 is another console launch exclusive. This time from Sega, Fantasy Star Online features a new Genesis. Uh, new Genesis includes a new world to explore, action-packed combat. The expansion is coming in 2021. So when they say console launch exclusive, they mean it's coming to console for the first time, not it's going to be there at launch. I'm I'm thinking so. Yeah, because it's the same I, thing with this. I meant it the I think of it the other way. Yeah, you do, but they don't. Well, fuck them. Mm-hmm. Talk to the consumer. It's, that's me. It's called the Fantasy Star. It's called Fantasy Star Online Two: New Genesis. I know I fucked up when I was reading that, but also I didn't like the way it was written either. Okay, um, a game they previously showed, Medium, uh, was showcased during this. Uh, we got a sense of the mysterious events that seemed to take place before the game began, and then it ended in a bloodshot or ended in a gunshot. Uh, it's supposed to be some sort of nightmare scenario that can be lived by the titular Medium, who seems to be looking for a way to change history. That's really all I know about that. I'm not excited for it. So right the the gunk, which is developed the by the creators of Steam World, the gunk was announced at the Xbox as an Xbox console launch exclusive. Uh, unlike their other their previous games, this one is in a fully 3D environment. The landscape can grow and change in an instant, but there is a dangerous enemies that don't want you there. Uh, the medium looks cool. Just I know I didn't touch on that. The gunk looks. I I don't know. So. I wasn't wowed by this event. I'm sure you're picking up on that. Yeah, I wasn't either. I think I stated that from the beginning. But I know that you're probably thinking we're being a little smart asses about most of these. But look, I felt the same way about a lot that was shown at Sony's too. I'm pretty sure we were smart asses about some of those. Yeah, so um, this next one I think is cool. Oh, you like the Tetris effects? Tetris effect colon connected? Yeah, so you you like know, that? Xbox is finally getting Tetris Effect, but it's mm. going to have multiplayer, which that game desperately needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and you it'll have multiplayer that. on the Xbox first, and then that will eventually come to PS4 as well. So uh, I like Tetris Effect. I like more people to play that. So yeah, I'm okay with that. Cool. This game is for you then, not for me. Yeah. Uh, Stalker 2 will be ex- launching exclusively on Xbox platforms. Set in the irradiated area of Chernobyl, made infamous by the nuclear disaster, the long-awaited sequel features heavy sci-fi elements, creatures are shown growing in underground labs, and one brave explorer ventures into the unknown. 
Uh, people have been waiting for Stalker 2 for a really long time, and now they get it. It's another first-person shooter with some horror right. sci-fi elements to it, so um, you sh- kind of know what you're getting there, I think. Destiny 2. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Xbox Game Pass will support Destiny 2 on Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and mobile via the cloud. The new version of the game of uh, for Xbox Series X will support 4K at 60 frames per second. All uh, expansions will be included in via Game Pass. Game Pass. Neato. Psychonauts 2 was announced. Jack Black is going to be featured in it, and he's also going to be doing some singing, of course, because we didn't Kind of figured that, right? Why wouldn't he? Right. Right. He stars as a, as a Navi-like wisp, but uh, keeps his signature deep voice for his songs. Uh, this is just one of the new characters Roswell encounter in the game, uh, which had cut content. Returned back to the game after Microsoft repurchased or acquired uh, Double Fine Entertainment. Independent studio Interior Night debuted its As Dusk Fog Falls game during the presentation. The game spans a 30-year period in America Southwest and Southwest and focuses on a family uh, and sacrifice. It uses watercolor style art and is described as an interactive drama. I thought it looked cool. It does look cool. It'll be interesting, I think. Um, kind of neat. Something different, maybe. Uh, the game's gonna another get Obsidian project that was previously unveiled... Grounded is like if Honey, I Shrunk the Kids were turned into a game. I think we talked about this a few weeks ago. Yeah, I asked about it. we did. It. Um, it's a sim game that have you and your friends trying to survive in a backyard plagued by bugs that can eat you. Uh, you got to work together to survive, or you can betray them and survive on your own. And uh, let's see. Apparently, it's out July 28th. What's this? In Xbox Game Preview. I don't even know what that is. Oh, on their game preview, you can... It's like a uh, early access deal. Oh, okay. Yeah. How do okay, you feel CB? about this one? What one? Grounded? Yeah. It acts like it's porn. It's like wants Gerald to agree to watch it. It's adult content over and over. I know. It's, I, don't, I don't know. I think it sounds interesting, but I don't like the idea of... I don't like the teamwork aspect of it. Yeah, me either. Um, especially not if, you know, you can be betrayed or whatever. And I think it's first... It almost... Is it first person? Yep. I believe it is. There we go. Maybe it's first or third. I'm out. Maybe. But I'm seeing a lot of... Yeah, the building looks cool. This game does interest me a little bit. Look, Gunk interests me a little bit. Uh-huh. As Dust Falls interests me a little bit. Psychonauts 2 interests me. Te- I mean, Tetris, it's, it's not that... And maybe it's a little bit of the, maybe it's fatigue. Maybe it's too many games between yeah, not, Sony and this and Nintendo yeah. Directs. And maybe it's just fatigue because also I'm like not leaving the house except for to go to work. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just overload. I'm still trying to finish The Last of Us. I haven't, I haven't bought Ghost of Tsushima, which uh, we haven't talked about yet, but we're going to chat about that in a little bit. I mean, there's just a lot going on right now and I don't know. Yeah, I know. I hear you. Anyways. I mean, I, I'm interested too, but I'm not blown away half to half. Like the I'm more excited. World. I'm Go more ahead. excited for Cyberpunk two, or for Cyberpunk 2077 than you know. That doesn't excite me at all. Some of these games, I know it doesn't. Uh, the Outer Worlds is getting new content from form of a DLC chapter. Parallel I am excited Gorgon. about this. That's going to come September 9th. I am excited for that. I really liked Outer Worlds. Not to be confused with Outer Wilds. Right, they're different. Which the world confuses. Tell me why. Don't Not Entertainment showed off Tell Me Why during the presentation, and the sibling story will focus on the relationship between a girl and her brother. The two are getting visions, visions whenever they get emotional, and it appears to have thrown a wrench in their understanding of the past and their upbringing. The first chapter will be out August 27th. Excited about that? Uh, yes and no. Um, Last of Us 2, not Last of Us 2. Shit. You okay? Having a, having yeah, a stroke? Yeah, I'm trying to think of the name of the game now. And I can't. I got it right over here, too. God damn it. What was it? Before the Storm. Um, fuck me running. I can't. I'm blanking on the name of the fucking game. One of you assholes going to help me here? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> I like the struggle. <laughs> you pieces of shit. Give me a second. I got to go look. I think my you really got to are... get up? Yeah, I don't remember the name. <laughs> there isn't... I can't believe you can't remember your favorite I game. can't either. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. Life is strange. Oh Life my is gosh. strange. That's it. Golly. I kept going back to Last of Us. Um, and I'm like, no, it's not it. No, it's not it. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Life is Strange 2. <laughs> Um, apparently not and I'm not uh, I don't know that this one interests me I, I'm sure I'll play the first chapter just to see um, but I, I think it needs to be a story that interests me yeah so, so I guess we'll see I'll tell you I, I seeing what seeing what other people are doing with the narrative driven stuff and, and I've never played a don't nod game mm-hmm. of, of any substance so I, I don't want anybody to I don't know what I'm talking about, but I want to say this. I feel like the same way that Telltale got out Telltale, uh-huh. I think Don't Nod is getting out Don't Nodded out right don't now. Don't Nodded? Yeah. It's possible. When That's you look possible. at stuff like, and I know we talk about it too much, but like Supermassive is doing something just incredible with the way that they tell stories and the way that their narrative-driven uh, games are. And Man of Medan was excellent. Little Hope's going to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, I just I just think there are, you know, that the game we just talked about, um, what was it called? As Dusk Falls. It looks excellent. Like, there are just so many people doing these narrative-driven experiences now that I think you have to step up, and I think Don't Nod's gameplay has always been its problem. Their storytelling is, is, is incredible, but I don't think the gameplay holds up. Same thing Telltale. Their engine was a disaster over on Telltale, and they stuck with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. uh, he may be onto something there. Um, maybe I'd played. I loved the first Life is Strange. Now that I remember the fucking name, but um, back then, I mean, they were it was new at the pinnacle. Yeah, they right. were better was, than Telltale at what Telltale was doing. Right, and uh, but now they've, you know, they've only released uh, what uh, the Captain DLC, Captain Morgan's, yeah, and then they did the. Uh, and then they did Vampire. They did Vampire, which was a completely different step for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was not the same. Um, and then they What's did crazy. Life is Strange too. Um, what was their first? Remember me. Remember me. Which was totally different. That was their their first game. Well, Life is Strange actually takes a lot of the ideas from. Yeah, but Remember Me was a totally remember different me. kind of game. Oh yes, yes, it was an, an action adventure game. Yeah, an action game. Um, but if you remember yeah. back, was supposed to be a PlayStation exclusive that PlayStation dropped. Yeah. I think it was then published by maybe Capcom? Uh, it wasn't Capcom. Namco? Nam- Namco. Wow. Uh, Namco Bandai? Nam- Possibly. <laughs> now I'm having a Life is Strange moment. Good. Everybody yeah, needs somebody. one. Doesn't matter. Everwild. This one looks cool to me. Uh, Rare's Everwild was shown during the presentation, and it looks to be a tranquil, unique game with a gorgeous color scheme. Enormous creatures roam the world, but they don't appear to be hostile, or at least not the ones that you're around. Uh, Some of these creatures appear to be on the brink of death, and humans work to revive them. I thought this game had a cool look to it. I like Rare. Um, I like the way this game looks. It does look good. Uh, I don't know what it is. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a story-driven game than it is crazy action or anything like that. Uh, let's see. Balin Underworld. No, Balin Uch- Wonderworld. Wonderworld. Sorry. You got that Kay Beckinsale in the brain. Uh-huh. Hey, I just watched that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that might be why. Um, no, Balin Wonderworld. Yuji Naka appeared during the pre-show with Square Enix to premiere his Balin Company of Division's new project. The action game Balin Wonderworld makes use of a single button to perform several different abilities. Your action changes depending on the costume you're wearing. It supports 24 languages and will be on Xbox One and Series X with smart delivery. The Xbox One. <laughs> huh? You said I can't even talk right now. You said Xbox One. Xbox One. <laughs> what you... Did I? <laughs> yeah. It's got that smart pack. That's how you did it. Xbox. That was good. Uh, now I got wrestling on the brain. 
too. You had a tough time with the Balin. <sighs> First, you wanted to call it Underworld. The and X-Pack. you did the x Um Hello, <laughs> Hello <laughs> Neighbor 2 was announced during the pre-show with a look at gameplay fe- featuring a mysterious bird-like creature. The game expands on the system from the first game and will continue uh, to f- and will feature more advanced AI and more areas to explore. You'll be able to visit the surrounding environments uh, for even more horror potential. It's coming to Xbox and PC in 2021. Well, this ought to go well. Uh, Echo Generation, a gorgeous adventure game made by a smaller studio in Ontario, Canada. Coco Cucumbers Echo Generation. <laughs> that's a freaking great name, Coco Cucumbers. Oh, that's hard to say, though. And I'm having a bad day as it is, so I had to really <laughs> concentrate. Um, uh, was shown, so it was shown during the pre-show. It uses a card system for battling and has a unique aesthetic that almost resembles a voxel art. Watch Dogs Legion. Mm. We got a new look at Watch Dogs Legion during the pre-show, and it focused on permanent permadeath. Uh, a super a super spy is immediately killed, and dead sec must look to l- other London citizens in order to replenish their ranks. I firmly believe this game is going to fail. Maybe. I don't think you can draw in players if they don't have a character they can connect to. I'm not sure if everyone can die, or if there you there are main characters that. That exist. My understanding is you can be anybody you want to at any time. Yeah, you recruit people over, and I think that's mostly true, but I wonder if there are, per- are, are characters that can't die in order to move the story forward. <sighs> I don't know. I also just, don't care about Watch Dogs. Yeah, yeah, I'm just really worried about it. I don't... I think the concept that they're concentrating on is way off base for what players want, but... Hmm. I don't know. guess we'll see. Uh... Exomecha. Twisted Red revealed a new first-person shooter called Exomecha during the pre-show. Looks to be an action-packed game that mixes vehicular combat with battles against enormous weapon-wielding mechs. There are fire-breathing mechanical creatures, and it will be free when it arrives later this year. And last but not least, Dragon Quest XI-S. Dragon Quest XI is coming to Xbox and will be available on the Xbox Game Pass. This is the first time the series has even come to an Xbox platform and appears to be mostly unchanged from the previous version. It even includes the retro mode and turns the game into a retro-style RPG. It will launch on December 4th. That is everything revealed from the event, and I want to remind everybody that everything on that list will be included in Game Pass. Mm -hmm. That is my understanding, that all of those games are in Game Pass, including Watch Dog Legion. I could be wrong. Oh, was that shown during the pre-show? Let me back up. Hold on. Yep. Let me calm, calm my was tits down Was it pre-show? It was yes. in the pre-show, so it's probably not part of Game Pass. I think <laughs> everything in the the traditional show itself is part of Game Pass. And the so pre-show me, is just stuff you'll be able to get. I believe that's the case, but let me... Let me say that just to be safe. Uh, let's move on to the next story. Ghost of the, First off, I hate how this is written. I've seen this everywhere. Ghost of Tsushima is the PS4's fastest-selling original IP. That's true, but sort of misleading, I think. I think it's real misleading, but uh, ultimately true, yeah. Uh, The new open-world IP has sold over 2.4 million copies within the first three days of launch. This makes it Sony's fastest-selling original IP. Here's where it gets a little confusing, though. Uh, The previous record was held by Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, but... When we say original IP, it means launching on the PS4. So yes. Uncharted sold more. The Last of Us Part Two sold more. It's not you know, it's not the fastest selling game on the PS4, but it's the the fastest selling original IP on the PS4. Right, like new intellectual property, essentially something yes. that hasn't been you we haven't seen before. Again, it's still far lower than other first-party offerings. The Last of Us Part Two, which launched in June, sold over 4 million copies in its first three days, uh, which beat out the previous record holder of Marvel's Spider-Man, uh, which sold 3.3 in the same period. Both games were set to receive follow-ups on the PS5. Spider-Man Miles Morales is launching later this year, and Horizon Forgot Forbidden West is coming in 2021. So, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a thing, yeah. and for everybody freaking out about... Uh, Spider-Man, Sony didn't own 
That's a insomniac. Modern property. Yeah. 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 It's also yeah, it's not original. It's not theirs. But they also right. didn't even own them whenever that was happening. That's an intellectual property owned by Marvel. Right, and they just have the video game rights to it. Right. So for anybody that's like, well, you just said that number was higher. Fuck off. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. We love you guys. Uh, have you gotten, see, you haven't gotten Ghost of Tsushima yet, have you? I'm tired. No, I want to. I just got to finish the first 30-hour game before I can try to finish the second 30-hour game. I don't think I'm... I think I'm going to pass on it. Yeah, I think that's okay. It's going to get cheap if you can wait. Well, I just don't like the switching. Yeah. Apparently, the key to that game is knowing when to switch your stances. I think for, like, the the dueling combat, that's true. I don't think that's all the time. I think there's a difference. Yeah, I'm just not into that. Uh, Sony has given away a $10 credit to select PlayStation Plus members. Having launched a decade ago in June 2010 during the PlayStation 3 era, era, Sony is now celebrating its 10 years of PlayStation Plus by giving away loyal subscribers a $10 store credit. Uh, not everyone seems to be getting this, but there's no need to redeem a code or do anything on your part. You should receive it automatically and automatically be rewarded when you turn on your PS4. You receive a message that says, Thank you for choosing PlayStation Plus. Um, and the notification from the company that $10 has been deposited to your wallet. It's unclear exactly what requirements have to be met to receive this $10 credit, um, but I have received it, and in front of the show, Marshall 205 did not receive it. So I did not receive it. There you go. Gerald, did you get it? There you go. Gerald also did not get it. I don't know. I turned mine on, and I had it. And it says exactly that. Thank you for celebrating 10 years of PlayStation Plus. What I'm curious about is because I, I would have gotten PlayStation Plus right then. That's what I'm curious about. And it never lapsed. So I actually am also 10 years with PlayStation Plus. So I wonder if everyone else will start getting theirs when they hit their 10 year mark. Hmm. So I'm curious. Also do the math and see how much money I've given them. Or maybe you had to come out and. Nope, oh, Gerald got it too. Do you not pay attention to your notifications? Play. Psycho. Psycho. Yeah, I did not get it. Now, Gerald, did you have live from the moment... PlayStation Plus. Or PlayStation Plus from the moment it uh, went live? But was that when it first came out? So then, no, it would not be that. Mm. Interesting. That's when I... No, was that your PlayStation 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. PlayStation 3. But did you get PlayStation Plus day of, is what we're asking. Okay, so that might be it. So that might be it, then. No, that, I, guess, I guess we'll find out. All I know is I didn't get the money, and I spend a shit ton with them, too. So My iPad is shit the bed. Awesome. The next story, awesome. I think, is Rocket League has gone free to play. Scroll up a little bit for me there, Drew. Yep, it is. Um, Rocket League is going free to play this summer. Psyonix, uh, along with Epic, who now owns Psyonix, has announced that Rocket League, after five glorious years uh, being a paid game, will become free to play. This will bring in a slew of new assholes, I can only imagine. Hmm. Um, but it is what it is. They are also... Um, for anyone that's super upset with it, they are giving out some rewards to people who played the game beforehand. Hell, you bought it five years ago. I don't really know what you have to be upset about. <laughs> but if you are, all Rocket League branded DLC released before free to play will be free for everyone who had played it. You will get an established 20XX, which will dis- display the year that you first started playing Rocket League. 200 plus common items will be upgraded to le- uh, Legacy. Quality. I don't know what that means yet. You'll get a golden Cosmos boost trail, uh, uh, a Desi or Dicey or whatever, Ori wheels, a Huntress player banner. And for anyone who played the game before that announcement, you will also get a faded Cosmo boost trail for totally for free, along with the above mentioned items. So you're getting quite a bit there. Um, but yeah, it's it's you know I got mixed feelings about this. I think it's a good thing to keep the platform alive, um, but you know I think when PlayStation Five as well as Series X come out, that it makes a total sense to have that game ready at launch for those platforms as a free to play game. It's also Epic now, so that's kind of their jam. 
right. click on that link for me there, Gerald. The one link that I left in this whole article. So they put out some interesting stats alongside this. Scroll down to the infographics here. Infographics. That's a big word, dude. Celebrating five years, they've had 75 million players. Five billion matches played and 29 billion goals scored. Um, Keep going down. Fuck all that stuff. Uh, Some stats here. The most popular car is the Ronin GXT. Hmm. Uh, Rocket Pass tiers unlocked is like 479 million or something like that. That's a number. And the most popular number. limited time mode was Heat Seeker. Keep in mind that's just in the last 12 months. Yep. And then same thing. They show the Fennec. They show the topper, the wheels, everything that's most popular. A lot of those are tied to challenges to have to do. Uh, they list some community trend there. Yeah, but 75 million players have played 5 billion matches. Uh, it's a lot of Rocket League. It is. A lot of Rocket League. So I'm going to have to get in there and get some of my free stuff. Hell yeah, get that free stuff. Again, this summer it will become free to play, so if you've always been curious about it and tired of hearing us talk about it, jump in there. Check it out. I haven't played it in forever. Uh, the next story is not something I thought that I would ever need to say. <laughs> but G4 TV and X-Play appear to be returning in 2021, but How? So after shuttering the network nearly five years ago, it seems G4 maybe makes some kind of return. A teaser made its debut during IGN's Comic-Con at home event, followed by an official uh, followed official Twitter accounts for both G4 TV and X-Play, a uh, channel associated with G4 Media, have hinted to the network is slated to come back in 2021. Uh, how it will come back and how it will look, no one knows. There was a minute-long uh, trailer video there's no information it's kind of like scrolling through a house it ends on a crt that shows the g4 logo and says something ominous like we never stop playing i think it's i think that's what it says and i'll see it here but it says something like that uh, former attack of the show host kevin Pereira tweeted very interesting um and there was also uh, a follow-up tweet which he mentioned olivia munn in uh, Adam Sessler, former X-Play co-host and games media personality, chimed in saying he didn't expect to see a, uh, to see in the X-Play Twitter account. So, yeah, Morgan Webb made some smart-ass comments, too. You know, I don't know where Adam Sessler stands on it. I don't know what Morgan Webb's even doing. Uh, Kevin Pereira has talked a lot of shit about late G4 but loved early G4. I don't know. Uh-huh. He's got his whole thing going with attack now. I don't know there's, if he'd be interested in. There's no way Olivia Munn's coming back. She's not coming back either way. Um, I, I also need to be clear. You're not going to see this on cable TV. You don't think so? No. I don't know. I don't know what it'll I, be. I don't think so. Um, actually, yeah, I did. I did state that pretty matter of factly. Uh, yeah. I pretty firmly believe that this is not going to be coming to cable. Oh, you fucking talking to G four on the other line or something? <laughs> uh, I pretty firmly believe you're not going to see this on cable TV. I don't think that's the medium anymore. Uh, you might see it come to one of the streaming services. Maybe you find a whole new streaming service for just games. I don't know, but I don't think it's going to be cable TV. Be interesting to see. Now, Dan, all these other stories were just leading up to this last one. Everything we put on the list, all of the talking beforehand, all of it was just going to this next moment. This one is the biggest deal. <laughs> do you want to do it? I want to do it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I'll let you break this this story to the world. I just want to preface the story with, I just need to tell everybody, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. Everybody, thanks for talking shit, but I really, truly believe this is the biggest story on here. Uh, um, Mark Paul Gosselar is making the Save by the Bell podcast we deserve. <laughs> I love how the title's written. That we deserve it. We do de- deserve it. Damn, Skippy. Uh, there's a new show with a retrospective podcast on the way. Uh Saved by the Bell is going to get its episodic breakdown in a new podcast called Zack to the Future. And it'll be hosted by none other than Zack Morris himself, Mark Paul Gosseler. Uh, in a statement, Gosseler said, For years I have been asked by the dedicated fans of Saved by the Bell to revisit the show. 
I couldn't wrap my head around an idea that would keep the audience enter- entertained and celebrate the beloved series we created over 30 years ago. Mostly because I can't remember a thing about making it. <laughs> I can appreciate I that am, comment. Uh huh. And I am thrilled to say I have found the answer. Uh, it's going to be co hosted by uh, Dashiell Driscoll. He's the creator of the web series called Zach Morris's Trash. Yep. Uh, check that out. It's funny. Uh, Driscoll seemingly c- could be more thrilled to make a podcast about Zach Morris with. Zach Morris. I think it should say couldn't be more. I think thrilled. it's supposed to be couldn't. Yeah, I don't think he's. I don't think he's like. Well, that's an okay idea. Uh, and he said, "I've been told there are other TV shows besides Saved by the Bell, and someday I hope to watch one of them. They sound fantastic. But until then, I'm so excited to return to Bayside and introduce Mark Paul Gossler to Zach Morris, and to do so with producer Cadence Thirteen. Uh, funny thing about the news of the podcast is that it comes as Gosler is preparing to return to his Saved by the Bell roots. He has been confirmed to be appearing on the upcoming reboot for NBC Universal's Peacock streaming service, in which viewers are going to learn that Zach has become governor of California. And for those who are just as excited as me, the first episode of Zach to the Future will debut July 29th on all podcast platforms. It's pretty awesome. Mm, I love it. It's pretty I'm, awesome. Ar- it would Ar- be interesting Ar- 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 to... I'm going to be subscribing to that. It'll be interesting to see how much he remembers as he watches it, because I also don't remember anything ever. Um, but I, I'm guessing that those things will rush back as he actually sits down and watches There's it. going to be more people. Oh, I re- yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to yeah. be awesome. I'm super jazzed up. And I also, uh-huh. fingers crossed for some special, special guest guests? hosts. Yeah. Not Screech, but everybody else. Screech has hit a rough patch. He has hit a rough patch, but he's, he's, you know, maybe it's time for a comeback. Maybe. What if he maybe announces not... the same thing? What if he announces he's also going to watch the episodes? Okay, well, every... it's, not as, it's not as cool when it's Screech <laughs> as it is when it's Zach. Sorry. Uh, I love it. I love that it's Sorry. happening. I love it's called Zach to the Future. I know. It's funny on several <laughs> levels. Because um, it's actually Zach to the past, if you think right. about it. Right. <laughs> but it's like a play on Back to the Future, and also it's it's very Saved by the Bell and very, like, punny. Yes. Yes. Like the, like the Zach Attack band happened. that they had? The yeah. Zach Attack. It's a horrible name for a band, by the way. But that's what makes it good. Yeah, it is what makes it good. Uh, yeah, so thank you. That's all the news. That was the biggest story of the week. Mark your calendars down again for July 29th. Um, that's when the first episode will air and I'm jazzed up about it. And what I think I'm going to do, I think they're still available on Netflix. I think I'm going to watch along with it. Mm. I think I'm going to watch it, then listen to the episode. I think I want to be fresh for it as well. I know I went back not too long ago and watched them all. I think I want to do it as he goes. He's only doing season one right now. If it's a hit, which it will be, I'm sure he'll continue. So I think I'm going to try to play along. Now, to be clear, we don't know which season one. What do you mean? Well, because the actual season one was called Good Morning, Miss Bliss. Yeah, no, I, no he's, I don't think that's what he's doing. But I think they're starting with Saved by the Correct. Bell. Correct. Yes, I believe so. So, um, Yeah, I think it even says that somewhere. He's watching Saved by the Bell series, series, season one. Maybe not here. Maybe it was something else I read. But okay. I think that is what he's doing. Uh, but sure, I think I'm going to watch along sure. with him. I don't think do. so. I think I want. I think I want to go on this journey with Mark Paul. And I yeah, think I do. I, but I, I want to like know what he's talking about because I don't. I'm not going to remember that. Oh, I'll remember I'm not going to watch it while he's he watching. It, I'm going to watch stuff, it. It'll come. It'll come rushing back. I didn't miss that show, man. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I don't want to watch it like while he's watching. I want to watch it then listen to the, the episode. Oh, I so don't. I, I want to strictly to listen. Yeah, I won't have any context because I can't remember it. Uh, see, I will. I don't remember so, anything. It'll work out well for me. That's why when the show notes went away, we just had to shut the whole show down almost. Because I can't remember anything. I barely remember that it was Rocket League. I think Uh, the next story is Rocket League. Shout outs to our uh, Patreon supporters, our producers over there. We'll call them Patreon producers because we don't give them proper shout outs anymore. Uh, Zach and Thomas, we hope all is well. I did hear from Thomas this week. He's very jazzed up about this G4 return. Is he? Yeah, but let me tell you what I said back to him because I like to oh, pump no. the brakes on people's excitement. Oh, could you just shit on his dreams? Is that what you did? He said 2021 going to be a good one. G4 is coming back in X-Play 2. 
And I said, but will it ever be as really as magical as it was back then hmm. with a bunch of yeah, dots? Yeah, look at out. you, Mr. Cynical. Well, oh, what a dick. That was my nice way of saying, don't get too fucking pumped because it's not going to be great. And Dan's already confirmed it's not even coming to cable. So. <laughs> He did reply back to me and say, don't ruin this for me with a bunch of laughing faces. So he took it. Good well. for him. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, just remember, is. just remember, okay? Seven months ago, 2020 was going to be a lot better too. Depending on what your ranking is for better, 2021's got a real shot at sucking less hard than 2020. <laughs> okay, this the competition's not steep if you're going year by year. You're right. You're right. Uh, 2020 has not been excellent by any stretch. No. So whatever happened to the murder hornets, boy? They just went away. You know they got they got outplayed. Is that what it was? Yeah, I mean they got they got trumped. They got you outmaneuvered. Like they got trumped. They they got outmaneuvered. The murder hornets are still here. Yeah. Don't forget th- they've gone underground. That's don't why I don't hear about them anymore. Keep an eye out. I don't know. It's a screwed up time right now. Twenty one twenty one. Uh, ha- well, I hope it's better. <laughs> That's all I can say. I'd wear a shirt right now that says twenty twenty one. I hope it's better because uh, I don't want to say it can't get worse because that seems to be a thing that challenge accepted is what keeps happening when that, yeah, that happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's uh, like I'll take that bet. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's house money right there. Uh, I hope it's better. I think it uh, has a real opportunity to be better. That's as comfortable as I am to say anything right now. <laughs> Fair enough. There's a chance it could be better. <laughs> and um, we're hoping for that chance. All I'm saying is 2019 don't seem so bad now, huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hindsight's... Not 2020. <laughs> not, not 2020. Hindsight. Us... <laughs> Hindsight's 2019. <laughs> you can follow us on social media as I am at podcast. Ryan... Dan is at Charlotte. Dan Gerald is at Hoffin Show. Together we are at Game Underscore Stitch. I'll tell you what. I had a real conversation this week because a friend of the show, Pat Man, made some mention that we should start putting some video clips up of us playing Rocket League. And I'm like, eh, you know, maybe we just stream would be easier than putting video clips up because I'm lazy. Hmm. And then, you know, Marshall 205 for a long time, friend of the show, Marshall 205, has been pushing been us trying to, to stream. Um, so... For the first time, I had a conversation with the two of them where I was the guy that was like, I, I don't mean maybe. Um, and I'd always blamed them for not streaming because I was like, then everybody has to be in agreement and it's a whole deal. But um, I will say that maybe we're getting close to a point where we may start streaming content a couple days a week on our Twitch channel. So we'll keep you updated on that. It seems more likely now than ever, though, because they're both pushing me to, to do that. To do so, it? To get yeah. it done? Not against it. It's just, you know, I like to, you know, sometimes one of us will, you know, run to the bathroom and mute the headset and somebody's eating. And I don't know that everybody wants to hear all that. It's not like a structured, like clean stream. No, nah, that's part of it, man. It's fine. So I don't know. We'll see. But that's just want to let people know. If you think that's a good idea, let us know. Most importantly, uh, thank you for joining us. You know, thanks for taking time out of your quarantine or non-quarantine or work or non-work or whatever it is you do nowadays. Your hunt for the murder hornet. Mm. It's a great show to listen to while you're stalking a murder hornet. This one is, yeah. Yeah. Actually, as much as I love this show, I wouldn't listen to anything while I'm stalking the murder hornet because you probably want to listen from the murder hornet. You do one ear in, one ear out. Oh, yes. Still entertaining, but also I'm on the defensive, you know? You're going to need earbuds at that point then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best show to listen to with one earbud on the internet. (laughs) Uh, But thank you seriously for listening, uh, listening. Be cool to everyone. Be excellent to each other. And we'll be back next week. Same time, semi-same place. Good night. Good night.